Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 1, lesson 2, Multiply and Divide Monomials. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the laws of exponents to multiply and divide monomials with common bases. Let's learn. Monomials. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. For example, 6y to the second power is a monomial since it's a product of 6 and y to the second power. The expression x plus 3 is not a monomial since it's the sum of two monomials. The key here, monomials are only dealing with multiplication. If we're adding, subtracting, or dividing in, it's not going to be a monomial. So when addition or subtraction signs separate an expression into part, they are called terms. A monomial only has one term, which actually where the word comes from, mono meaning one. The expression x plus 3 has two terms, so it is not a monomial. It has a term here and a term here. These both separately would be monomials, but together it is not a monomial. Write each expression in the appropriate bin. An example of each type is given. So our monomials are just dealing with multiplication. They are one term, not monomials will have add, subtract, or divide within it. So we have x first. Is that only dealing with multiplication or just something by itself? Yes, x is a monomial. What about 80? 80 is also a monomial. There's no adding, subtracting, or dividing involved. x squared minus y squared. Here I can see my subtraction, making it not a monomial. 8x, that is 8 times x. It is one term, so that is a monomial. And x plus 5, again, I have a plus sign here. It is not a monomial. And it looks just like the example of a non-monomial. Let's learn product of powers. To simplify the product of powers with the same base, such as 4 to the second power times 4 to the third power, we're going to write each of them out as a product of factors. So 4 to the second power is two factors, so we can see here 4 times 4. 4 to the third is a product of three factors, 4 times 4 times 4. And since we are multiplying in the middle, we can see that really we're just multiplying 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, which altogether makes it 4 multiplied 5 times. If we were to put it back together now as an exponent, there are 5 factors of 4, so we could rewrite it as 4 to the fifth power. So 4 to the 2nd power times 4 to the 3rd power would be equal to 4 to the 5th power. Notice that the sum of the exponents of the original powers is the exponent of the final product. So sum means you're adding 4 to the 2nd power times 4 to the 3rd power is equal to 4 to the 2 plus 3. So I added my exponents to get my final one. So if you are multiplying with the same base, you can just add the exponents. This is called the product of powers property. That property along with some other ones in this lesson and in future lessons, together are the laws of exponents. And they are the rules we're going to follow so we can simplify expressions involving exponents. So what we just saw was the product of powers property. To multiply powers with the same base, you're going to add their exponents. So if you are writing it algebraically, something to the m power times the same base to a different power, you're going to add the two things together. So 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd would be saying 4 plus 3 as the exponent, which means it's 2 to the 7th power. Example 1. Multiply numerical powers. Simplify 5 to the 4th times 5. So 5 to the 4th times 5 is really the same as 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 1st power. You're rarely going to see an exponent of 1, so if you see a number without an exponent, please just know that it is a hidden exponent of 1. Now that we have the same base, we can add the exponents since we're multiplying them together. So 4 plus 1 gives us 5 to the 5th power. If we are dealing with just numerical powers, we also can multiply it out to simplify. So 5 to the 5th power multiplied out 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 3,125. So 5 to the 4th times 5 would be equal to 5 to the 5th, or if we multiplied it out, 3,125. Check your understanding. Simplify the given expression. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said 4 to the 8th power, or if you multiply that out, it's 65,536. Now, if you just leave your answers for this lesson as a power, that will be fine, unless it specifically asks you to multiply it out. The lower the numbers, the more likely you're going to need to multiply it out. 4 to the 8th power, I would just leave instead of multiplying it out. To get that, we have the same base, so we just need to add our exponents. 5 and 3, 5 plus 3 is 8, so 4 to the 8th. Example 2, multiply algebraic powers. Simplify c to the 3rd times c to the 5th. So here we can see we have the same base, which means we can use one of our laws of exponents. And since we're multiplying, we can use the product of powers property. So same base multiplied, I'm going to add the exponents. So c to the third times c to the fifth, I add my two exponents, keep the same base, three plus five is eight. So c to the third times c to the fifth would be c to the eighth power. Check your understanding, simplify the expression given. Pause the video and complete the check. 
Check your answer. You should have got x to the 10th power. We have the same bases multiplied. So add the exponents. 4 and 6 gives us 10. Example 3. Multiply monomials. Simplify negative 3x to the second power times 4x to the fifth power. If you come across a problem like this, really you're just going to be following the product of powers property and then multiplying the coefficients, which are the numbers out front. So each of these is really just a multiplication problem in itself. So 3, negative 3x squared is negative 3 times x to the second times 4 times x to the fifth. We can use the commutative and associative properties to rearrange and regroup. When we do that, we're multiplying the coefficients. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Then we can follow the product of powers property. So x to the second power times x to the fifth power, same base multiplied, add the exponents. 2 plus 5, we get 7. So my coefficient would be negative 12. My variable term would have x to the seventh power. So negative 12 x to the seventh power. So I use my product of powers property and then multiply the coefficients. Simplest way to get there. And doing so, we got negative 3x squared times 4x to the fifth was negative 12x to the seventh. Check your understanding. Simplify the expression given. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got d, negative 6a to the fifth. So to get that first, we have negative 2 times 3. I'm going to multiply my coefficients first, negative 6. This a is really a to the 1. Remember, no exponent, it means it's an exponent of 1. a to the 1 times a to the 4. Add 1 plus 4, there's where we get our a to the fifth power. Let's learn quotient of powers. So to simplify the quotient of powers with the same base, such as 3 to the 6 divided by 3 to the second, we're pretty much going to follow the same steps that we did with multiplication, but we're dividing instead. So I'm writing out 3 6 times. If I write out 3 2 times, now dividing, I'm going to cancel out any factors that would make 1. So 3 divided by 3 makes 1. 3 divided by 3 makes 1. I'm going to take one from the top, take one from the bottom, whenever I can. Once all of them are gone off of either the numerator, top, denominator, bottom, then I'm done. And I'm going to see what's left. So here I had four left on the top. So three times three times three, three to the fourth. Dividing by one, you don't really write that. So three to the fourth. So dividing these would give us a quotient of three to the fourth. Before I go to the next slide, can you think of maybe what the rule would be for the quotient of powers? So if you are figuring out the pattern, notice that the difference of the exponents is the exponent of the final quotient. Difference meaning subtraction. So when we're dividing, we can just subtract the exponents if we're dividing with the same base. This is called the quotient of powers property. So our quotient of powers property says if we're dividing with the same base, subtract their exponents. This time though, we do need to factor in a cannot be zero because there's an a in the denominator and we can't be dividing by zero. So as long as the a is not zero, there's no zero in the denominator, then we're good. So how does this look with numbers? 3 to the 7 divided by 3 to the 3rd, subtract their exponents, 7 minus 3 is 4. So that would be 3 to the 4th power. Example 4, divide algebraic powers. Simplify x to the 8th divided by x to the 2nd. So because we're dividing with the same base, we just need to subtract the exponents. That's our quotient of powers property. So 8 minus 2 gives us 6. So x to the 8th power divided by x to the 2nd power, same base, subtract the exponents. Since I'm dividing, I would get x to the 6th power. Check your understanding. Simplify the expression given. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got z to the 8th. So same base, dividing. I have to subtract the exponents. 12 minus 4 is 8. Example 5. Divide powers. Hawaii's total shoreline is about 2 to the 10th miles long. New Hampshire's shoreline is about 2 to the 7th miles long. About how many times longer is Hawaii's shoreline than New Hampshire's? So here I can see how many times implying that I need to divide. So to determine how many times longer, I'm going to divide their lengths. So Hawaii's divided by New Hampshire's. Hawaii's was 2 to the 10th, dividing by 2 to the 7th. I have a division with the same base, so I need to subtract their exponents. So 10 minus 7 gives us 2 to the 3rd power. Now, here it's telling me to simplify this out. So 2 to the 3rd power, 2 times 2 times 2 is just 8. So Hawaii's shoreline is about 8 times longer than New Hampshire's. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the table to determine how many times greater is Madison Square Garden than a movie theater. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said B. It's 3 to the 4th or 81 times larger. So to get that, Madison Square Gardens, I'm going to put on top. 3 to the 9th, that's not 39, 3 to the 9th power. Dividing by the movie theater, 3 to the 5th. Subtract their exponents is 3 to the 4th. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. These two make 9. These two make 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So 3 to the 4th, which is 81 times larger. Example 6. Divide numerical powers. 
Simplify 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 5th times 5 squared, all divided by 2 squared times 3 to the 4th times 5. This problem might look complicated, but if we break it down into the different bases, it becomes rather simple. First, I have my bases of 2s, and I can see my bases of 3s and my bases of 5s. I'm going to treat them all separately and then combine them back together at the end. So 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared, I would just subtract their exponents and get 2 to the 3rd power. 3 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 4th, subtract their exponents, I get 3 to the 1st power, or just 3. 5 squared divided by 5 to the 1st, 2 minus 1, again, 5 to the 1st power. Now let's evaluate, multiply it out. 2 to the 3rd power is 8, 3 to the 1st power is 3, 5 to the 1st power is 5. Multiply it all together, we get 120. So this complicated expression has a value of 120. Check your understanding, simplify the given expression, and choose the answer that is equivalent. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said A. If we're dividing this, 2 to the 2nd and 2 to the 1st will give us 2 to the 1st, which is just 2. 3 to the 3rd divided by 3 to the 1st would be 3 to the 2nd power, which here they're leaving it. So really, there's only a couple of choices. A is our only choice left. 5 and 4 would give us to the 1, which is just 4. A is the only one that has all 3 correct. Example 7. Divide monomials. Simplify 12w to the 5th divided by 2w. So just as we did in the last example where we separated the bases, here we can do the same with our coefficients and our variables. So here, if I separate my coefficients from my variables, I can treat them separately and put them back together at the end. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now I can use my quotient of powers to divide the same base. w to the 5th divided by w with a hidden 1 exponent. Subtract my exponents, I get w to the 4th. Squish it back together, 6w to the 4th. So 12w to the 5th divided by 2w would be 6w to the 4th. Check your understanding, simplify the given expression. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got 4k to the 4th power. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. k to the 9th divided by k to the 5th. Subtract their exponents, we get 4. And it was a base of k. So 4k to the 4th.